Hi, my name is Aiden Tuminator from the Cochlear Implant Life YouTube channel. Today we're going to look at the eight cons of a cochlear implant, the eight negative points. Why not subscribe and like the Cochlear Implant Life YouTube channel? It means you get all the latest updates and videos. It's time now to get started. Let's dive right in. The first negative I'm going to look at is cochlear implant surgery. Now, like any operation, uh, you're under anaesthetic. When this happens, there's a slight risk, as we know. And uh, those people who have existing medical conditions, the risk is a bit greater. It's very rare that you might experience complications. There's also a very, very slight chance of cochlear implant surgery failure. This is something I experienced. I was in surgery for eight hours. They couldn't find the cochlear. Two months later, they operated again. They found the cochlear. I was able to have a successful operation. Statistically, cochlear implant surgery failure is very, very rare. So I want to emphasize that. The second negative is that some people can experience side effects after cochlear implant surgery. When you meet the surgeon for the first time, it's a good idea to talk to him about the side effects. One common side effect, for example, is tinnitus. My situation was different because I was in surgery for a long time. However, I did have a high level of tinnitus after my surgery and over time this decreased and calmed down. Now today, using my processor, uh, it kind of masks the tinnitus. I don't experience tinnitus anymore. Another side effect that people experience is they might lose their sense of taste and over time this sense of taste comes back. Sometimes it doesn't. Some people have complained of dizziness after their surgery and there have been reports of balance difficulties. A very rare but devastating complication of cochlear implant surgery can be facial nerve paralysis. There's a 0.7% chance that this could happen. It's a rarity. The third negative point I'm going to look at is the safety and dependency aspect. The surgery today is a lot more advanced than it was when I had my cochlear implant surgery. Now, for example, you have residual hearing and what the surgeon will do is they'll try to preserve any of that residual hearing. There's a risk that you could lose that and that's a sacrifice you sometimes make for having the cochlear implant. Now, if you lose your residual hearing, you can feel a little bit exposed. You can't hear the sounds around you anymore unless you put the processor on. So you're completely dependent on the processor and this can be quite unnerving a shock. It is also elements of dependency with a processor. For example, if my processor breaks down and I've been really unfortunate that it's broken down on Fridays and all weekend I've been without a processor and not been able to hear it. I don't have a spare processor so I have to wait until Monday and then I go to the hospital and they fix it for me. They fix the problem. So it's one week weekend without hearing. I don't want to talk to anyone because I'm so dependent on the process so I'll just lock myself in a room and watch box sets with subtitles and shut myself away from the world. It can leave you a bit exposed and a bit vulnerable but also you could look at that as a pro point. For example when I'm on a bus and people are making a lot of noise it's my pet hate. I'll just turn off the processor and I don't have to listen to someone bellowing on their mobile phone. You take the processor off. I haven't got any residual hearing. It is thunder and lightning out there. I'm not going to hear it. I consider that an advantage of Pro 2. My fourth negative point is variation in cost per country of the cochlear implant. Let's give you an example. So adults in the UK, they're entitled to one processor and cochlear implant operation free. If they want another cochlear implant, they want to go for the buy cost, they have to pay approximately £40,000. If you look at America, if you don't have insurance or your plan does not cover the surgery, it may have cost implications for you. Additionally, with costs, you will need to look at things like whether maintenance support, so you get maintenance for your processor, is that included in your plan or do you have to pay for that? And also look at things like batteries, do you have to pay for them or your batteries rechargeable? What's the cost implications there? Also, you 
you have to look at whether you're entitled to an upgrade. Every five years or less than that, Cochlear, Advanced Bionics and Medel, they'll produce new processes. Are you entitled to an upgrade? Is it free or are there cost implications? What happens when parts of your process are damaged? Do you have to pay for that? It's about variation per country in terms of cost. Look at what you're entitled to and what costs you might have to pay in the long term. My fifth negative point is background noise. When I got the processor switched on, I went out to the university campus. So I was overwhelmed by the multitude of sounds and, you know, it's picking up everything. And as a lot of background noise you could say. I learned to identify the background noise, the sounds, your brain starts processing and learning where the different sounds are coming from. I still get background noise okay so i'll go to a coffee shop and i'll have a conversation with someone and i will pick up that background noise i was hoping that having a cochlear implant would eliminate this now don't get me wrong it's better than when i had a hearing aid technology has advanced and the new processes they've got settings on them to change the settings for background noise when you go for mapping and tuning you can get all this sorted out with your audiologist to get the best sound for you with your processor to combat background noise the sixth negative i'm going to look at is sports risks if you play high contact sport like rugby for example you'll be required to wear a helmet the risk is that you could lose the ability to hear you could lose the ability to use your cochlear implant if you are exposed to impact before my surgery i had a chat with a doctor and they said to me no you can't play football after you have your surgery and i was very upset about this because i love playing football what i did strategically after this surgery i started playing five-a-side football this doesn't require me to wear a helmet I'm still taking a risk, but it's very slight. Whereas if I was playing 11 aside football, I think it would be a lot more dangerous. It's more physical and demanding, and there's more chance of being exposed to high impact. Prior to your cochlear implant surgery, the surgeon will say that scuba diving is a no-no. So that's something to take into account if you're passionate about diving. Be aware of the risks associated with sports and have that dialogue with the surgeon. The seventh negative point I'm going to look at is is that the implant may not work well for you. This is the worst case scenario. You could lose any remaining or residual hearing. This is a risk that we all take with cochlear implant surgery. The eighth and final point I'm going to look at is expectations. A lot of family and friends have these expectations and in terms of that you're going to be able to hear again straight away. This can be quite a negative because it produces a burden on the individual. It's important to manage their expectations prior to surgery and after surgery. Expectations can be a negative and it's about saying, okay, I'm I'm going on a journey and this is going to take time it's not going to happen overnight and that's it that's the eight cons of a cochlear implant the eight negative points i hope you enjoyed the video if you have additional comments about the cons of a cochlear implant we have a comment section we'd love to hear from you if you enjoyed the video please do like and subscribe to the cochlear implant live youtube channel see you in the next video